What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Three Floating Fight, Fight Night. Heavy Hitters is here. We have got an incredible game for you in the brand new classic constructed format. It's, it's out. Those cards are available at your local LGS. And speaking of LGSs, the most amazing LGS of all the land, The Realm Games, the sponsor of our channel, brings this video and all of our videos to you. Head down to the link below to check out their website, their store, singles, boxes, and bar none, the best community run events in flesh and blood. We are also brought to you by the geniuses, the scientists behind Fabrec. Go check out their link. Heavy Hitters is going to be bringing in all this new information. We're in a brand new meta. They've got articles. They've got deck building resources sourced from all over the internet. Go check them out to level up your game. And last, but certainly not least, this video is brought to you in part by Legend Story Studios. So thank you so much to LSS for helping us make some Heavy Hitters content for you guys and help us get it out early enough that you're gonna be able to check out these decks. And if you like them, you can head over to your LGS, head over to the Realm Games, and get the cards yourself because Heavy Hitters is here, folks. It's time for a game in the classic constructed format with Aiden on Kasai of the Golden Sands and Sam on KO. Armed and dangerous. Let's go ahead and get right into this classic constructed game. Oh, and also, don't you go anywhere. As always, we got a giveaway at the end of the video sponsored by The Mound Game. The Realm Games! This is gonna be a box of heavy hitters. You're gonna want it, so don't go anywhere. We'll give you the instructions at the end of the video. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm feeling armed, I'm feeling dangerous. I got golden sand in my pants. Let's go. Eight. Wow. Dice battle? Dice battle. Wager you this. Wager me seven? Yeah. Another eight? Five. 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 I'm, yeah, which is, it makes sense that I thought a five was a six. Be, well, what, you'll you're see, doing You'll yeah. see very soon. Yeah, okay, cool. All right. What do you want? I want first. Okay. What's up, team? My name is Sam O'Byrne, and today on Fight Night, I am lucky enough to get to play KO, Armed and Dangerous. KO has so much text. Let's break it down. I only got one weapon zone. I can only run. One one-handed weapon, my arm is gone and will be gone for the remainder of, of this game. My attack action cards get plus one when in any zone other than the combat chain. All the brute cards that do cool things care about if you discard a card with six or more power. So KO turns all your blue fives, all your yellow fives, into sixes when they get discarded in the graveyard. Incredible. Because I get to run all these new sixes, I am just trying to play an incredibly consistent game plan with this hero. My deck is attack actions, blood rush, bellow, and berserk. <laughs> That's it. So I'm really trying to have incredibly efficient and incredibly effective three to four card hands, but then if I'm able to get a berserk or a blood rush bellow off, then all of a sudden my whole deck just starts to go crazy. So I only get one weapon zone, so I gotta run KOs most, I just kidding. We're running the ball breaker, baby. Because I kept finding that I have a lot to go again and I was ending my chain with the mandible claw and so literally in the shower this morning, I was like, dude, what if I run the ball breaker? I hope it was the right choice. <laughs> Here we are in the arena and I'm playing Kasai of the Golden Sand. This new Kasai allows you to swing your swords for free if you draw cards. So that's pretty much my entire game plan for this deck, making my swords free so that I can swing multiple times after having drawn a card. And this new legendary warrior piece, Grains of Blood Spill, allows me to take all this extra floating I'm gonna have from having my swords be free from draw and make it so that whenever they hit, I can bank resources onto my next turn with Vigor Tokens. Swinging these swords multiple times is also going to keep my Valiant Dynamos on. So I'm just gonna try to go for consistent points of value, building up gold until I can raise an army and then really run him over. Good luck, have fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is pretty nice. We're gonna play out Nourishing Emptiness. Pitch this blue. I will float one resource. This is coming in for six big ones. Yeah, this has dominate because there are no attack actions in my graveyard. If Nourishing Emptiness hits, I will gain one intellect until the end of my turn and draw five cards very happily. I'm, sh I'm, sh I'm sure you're very happy about that. That feels so bad. But this is the only time Nourishing Emptiness matters is now you'll have it in your graveyard next time. Well, I'm Kasai and I can banish it away and oh, dominate you again. that's sick. <laughs> okay. It's like one of the best cards. All right, then in that case, I'll just block three. No reactions. 
Take three. The 37. I will, I will go to intellect five. Pack it up. This is the perfect opening hand. This is the perfect opening hand. We have a nourishing emptiness, which is gonna be dominate straight off the bat. Do you wanna give me your equipment or do you wanna give me five cards? Either I'm super happy with. So this rocks. This sucks. I have to give both pieces of my equipment here in order to stop him from getting a five card hand plus an arsenal for a total of six cards. I know the engine of his deck, gold tokens. I just want to save my equipment for his Kasai effect later in this game, where if a weapon hits, he makes a gold so that his engine is not online. And that's more important than one extra card on this stupid turn. I will arsenal this card, and then I will draw up to five because I have nourished my emptiness. Back to you. Draw one. My beautiful tunic will go to one. Alrighty, Mr. Nourishing Emptiness. Blood Rush Bellows. Oh. Two floating. As an additional cost to play Blood Rush Bellows, I just looked up, you have so many cards in your hand. <laughs> Discard a random card. You may pick. This one. It's a six! So, couple things happen. My brood attacks get plus two this turn. If the discarded card has six or more power, I get to draw two cards, and Blood Rush Bellow gains go again. And for the first time this game, KO, armed and dangerous triggers. As I discard a six, I get a might token. So at the start of my next turn, destroy this, and my next attack gets plus one. And it's just like, ah! nourishing emptiness. It's that. The cards I drew? Not very good. I'm gonna go ahead and play out a pulping using my two floating. So I'm gonna draw a card and I'm gonna discard a random card. If a card with six or more power is discarded this way, it gets dominant. And if it's defended by less than two non-equipment cards, it has go again. The middle one. I will discard Wage Agility, which has five power, wait! <laughs> KO, Armed and Dangerous says attack action cards get plus one power while they are in any zone other than the combat chain. So this right here is the graveyard. So KO is looking at that and giving it six. So this is satisfying the clause on pulping. This is coming in currently for seven. Go again if you don't defend with two non-equipment cards. All right, I will block three with raise an army, a card I really want to play, but I have no money right now. No money. So no, no army. Reactions. We are going to pitch this and play out a steel blade shunt, floating two. Steel blade shunts text doesn't matter, but I am blocking eight. You got it. All right, you block me out. I no longer get the go again, so I will arsenal. So I don't really want to be playing Blood Rush on a four card hand on my first turn, but I don't want to discard the Blood Rush to the other cards in my hand that discard random cards, so I have to play it here. And honestly, he has a five card hand and an arsenal. I feel like if I can scare him into blocking with cards on this turn, that is as important as me having a big scary turn. So he blocked with a card, he pitched a card, and he played a D-React. Like, that's three cards out of his hand for his next turn. I'm fine with this exchange. Draw three cards. For the first time this game. Mmm. Centauri Saber. Pitching another Glint the Quicksilver. Float two. Coming at you for two damages. If you block with an attack action card, it'll get plus one and come at you for three. Also notable, my chess piece says, whenever a weapon attack I control hits, I may pay one. If I do, I create a vigor. So two and maybe some shenanigans. Uh, no blocks. Reactions? I got reactions. <laughs> no reactions. I got Blade Runner, target one-handed weapon attack, gains go again, and my next weapon attack this turn gains plus three. This costs one. Two go again. Take two. One, two. Down to 35. I'm then going to swing my other Centauri Saber, this one for five because of the Blade Runner. For sure. No blocks for me. No reactions for me. One, two, three, four, five. Go to 30. Wait. Uh, uh are you going to end? I'm going to end. I have an instant speed effect I'd like to do. Okay. I'm gonna discard Agile Windup to create an agility token. Sounds good. Can I end? Yep, okay. I'm going to arsenal this card and back it up. Here we are in the arena. In the arena. At the start of turn, I have three things that are gonna happen. The first, Tunic goes to two. Next, my agility token gets destroyed. My next attack this turn is gonna get go again. Then, my might tur turkin, my might turkin, turkin destroys. My next attack this turn is gonna get plus one. I am now gonna go ahead, because I have go again, and attack you with bear fangs with go again. So, I'm gonna draw a card, and then I'm gonna discard a random card. Middle. Reincarnate! 
Reincarnate has five power. Except KO. When it's discarded at random, I get to put it on the bottom of my deck. And thanks to KO, it's actually a six power, which means- You're very excited two, about two, this. Two, 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 things, very... two things are gonna happen. Okay, tell me. This attack is gonna go up from six to eight with go again. Crazy. Then KO will trigger. So I will make another might token. And actually, lest we forget, I started this turn with a might. Lest we forget, I started this turn with a might token. So this attack ain't for eight. Oh, sorry. It's for nine, big dog. And I have one floating. Block one, three. Any reactions from you? No reactions from me. I will react with red steel blade shunt. Floating one. This is blocking one. Two, three, nine. Block and nine. I will then continue the turn and just attack you with the ball breaker. It's the ball breaker. Yep. It's attacking you for a total of four because I have discarded a card with six or more power this turn. It was that it reincarnate that's now on the bottom of the deck. It's coming in for four. I'll say no blocks. Take four. Break my balls. <laughs> Down to 36. And then I will arsenal this last card. Dude, this is such a sick showcase of heavy hitters in action. Because I discarded the Agile Windup on Aiden's turn, which is of course a six, thanks to KO, the agility token that popped at the start of my turn allowed me to do kind of like a three card 13, if you don't count the discard, which is sick and only possible because of the cards that KO has given us access to. So I'm feeling good. So the new Headpiece Bounce of Justice has guard well, which means that when the combat chain closes, it gets minus one defense counters equal to its defense. So it's like a battle worn, and it has an instant ability, which I hope to use against you at some point in this game. It'd be really bad against me. You know what we're gonna do? Outland Skirmish. My next one-handed weapon attack this turn gains plus three, and the next time a weapon attack hits this turn, I'll create a copper token. Going to swing this Centauri Saber at you to float. Coming in for five. If you block with an attack action card, it'll be for six. On hit, create a copper. I'm gonna block nine. All right, that's gonna push this to six. Plenty of Bunch attack. of attacks. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna say no reactions. Okay. And I will arsenal. Sounds good. Start of turn. Tunic to three. Start of turn. Mike gets destroyed. Pitch this berserk. That's a super how I wanna be using the card. To come in with a ball breaker. I haven't discarded a card with six or more power this turn, but my might token did destroy, and that is my next attack, so it's for four. I'll accept four here. Okay, no reactions from me. Down to 32. Ooh, he be smacking. <laughs> Draw back up, quake in my boots, five card hand. Somehow less than normally what you've been having this game. Uh. Just draw our swords. Okay. Pitch a red nail. <laughs> so draw swords, brand new card, art is Incredible. <laughs> Drawing the sword to face the beast, which you are. Excuse me? My next warrior attack this turn gets plus two. Draw a card, go again. So I'm gonna draw a card. Now, what Kasai says is if I've drawn a card this turn, my sword attacks cost one less to activate. Yep. Swords are free. We are going to Outland Skirmish. My next one-handed weapon attack this turn gets plus three. Copper on hit for free. I will swing a Centauri Saber for plus two, plus three. This is coming in for seven on hit copper. If you block with the card, it comes in for eight. Sick. Or actually not a card, an attack action card, but it's not like you have a bunch of those. Yeah, I'll block three, six, and I will block with the scowling flesh bag. That's gonna push this to eight. Yep. So I will block you for a total of eight and then I will intimidate that last card. Intimidated. I have nothing now. No reactions? No. Fantastic. That is not how I wanted that to go to me. <laughs> this intimidated card that was in my banish zone returns to my hand at the end of my turn, and then I will draw back to four. So last turn, Aiden had floating resources and a card in his hand that he did not use to give his Centauri Saber go again. So I'm pretty sure that if he has the ability to get go again on this turn, it's not that arsenal card and it is that final card that's in his hand. So the Scowling Flesh Bag here allows me to stop the copper generation because I do not like blood on her hands at all and intimidate that final card in his hand away until the end of the turn before the reaction step. So if it's a card that gives go again, I'm hoping I can kind of snipe it here with the Scowling. Feels like as good a time as any to get the value off this card. And of course, my hand is all blues, so they're mostly good for blocking here. 
Here I'm benefiting just kind of from being in the warrior class. I'm floating resources and I have a card in my hand and I see Sam itching to reach for his scowling flesh bag and it's just a steel blade shot. My turn is over, but he's very afraid of the go again and of the potential of me generating copper. So I see him go for the flesh bag here. This is great. It's just one really cool thing about the mind games of warrior. I'm going to go ahead and pitch the sixth blue I've drawn in two turns. Feels really good. Uh, and I will play out a barraging bighorn from Arsenal. I'm gonna discard a random card. This is a yellow pulping that normally has five power, but wait. KO Armed and Dangerous is gonna pump that up to six in the graveyard, which is going to make sure that KO Armed and Dangerous triggers. And I get a ye old might token. One floating. Uh, barraging bighorn, it's the same thing as pulping. So if it's defended by less than two non-equipment cards, it has go again, coming in for five. What are you gonna do with that? Oh, he's got a tunic counter, <laughs> you guys. You guys. I'm gonna say no blocks on this. Okay. Move your reactions. Go for it. We will shunt for five. Okay, block at five. I will then, with the go again, because it was never defended by less than two non-equipment cards. It was not. I will pop the tunic to go to two floating to attack you with the ball breaker. Four damage, coming at you. No blocks on ball breaker. Take four. Down to 28. All right, that's it for me. So it might look a little weird here that I'm using the shunt on the barraging, which has no additional text versus using it on the ball breaker, which is a weapon, which will trigger steel blade shunt and deal a damage to him. Either one is five points of value. I think I win this game by having the game go a little longer and me getting to set up a bit and then tempoing him out. I'm afraid of, of dying. Very afraid. He's a brute, he can go nuts. I'm valuing that extra point of life for myself higher than I'm valuing a point of life taken away from him. It's a skirmish. It's a saber. This is for five, floating one on hit copper. Well, I definitely don't think I am declaring any blocks. And I'm declaring no reactions. So I'm declaring one, two, three, four, five damage taken going down to 25. I'm going to get a copper token and I'm going to pay one into grains of blood spill to create for the first time this game, a vigor token, uh, which I'm not gonna put there. A vigor token. Maybe over there. A vigor token. <laughs> a vigor token. Yeah, you like it there actually? A vigor token. No, thank you. Actually, yes, no, please. Uh, no, 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 come back. A vigor token. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Back to four, back to you. Start turn tunic, start turn might. Okay, do I do it? Am I a coward? I think I'm a coward, I'm learning. A coward? I think I may be a coward. You're not ready to roll. Well, I'm gonna attack you with wild ride. This is gonna be coming in for seven, thanks to the might. I'm gonna draw a card. I'm gonna discard a random card. If a card with six or more power is discarded this way, it's gonna get going. If you give me the option to do the middle, I'll always do the middle. Understood. All right. This is coming in for and, seven. With and you get a new might. And I get a new might. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, KO. No blocks. Take seven. Taking seven. For sure. Ouch, 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 <laughs> ouch, ouch, ouch to 21. Well, I had a 33% chance to keep the yellow. Didn't get it. So two reds are going to a ball breaker. I have discarded a card with six or more power. So it's coming in for four. No blocks. Take four. Down to 17. Alrighty. I will pass the turn to you. Start of my turn. Vigor is going to pop and float me a resource. Then we're going to cash in. Whoa! With no money. So pitch a blue. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. So we got a cash in and no gold. Not the greatest. But it is something that I actually did think about in deck construction. And with the grains of blood spill, having this vigor token means I can turn a blue pitch and to draw two cards and make my swords free. So that means that cash in is even good without a gold token, which is all thanks to Kasai and grains of blood spill. Draw two cards that will activate Kasai though. So your shit's free now? My shit is free. I'm gonna draw swords. Pitch a yellow and a red. Okay. Draw a card. Wow, dude. I think I needed more go again in this deck. Okay. I'm going to Outland Skirmish. Then I'm gonna swing a Centauri Saber for plus two, plus two, two. A lot of cards to throw six at you. On hit, I'll get another copper. Double cash in, no gold. It's all about the big finish. It's all about the big finish. Three, six. All right, that's gonna push this to seven. And, and that means you're gonna take one damage. I'm gonna take one damage. And I'm gonna pay to grains of blood spill, get that vigor back. That's my turn. Okay. Oh, don't forget your copper trigger. Yeah, I gotta get my money. Give me my money. Mr. Krabs, Kasai Alter. <laughs> Start of turn. 
tunic to two. I'm gonna play a lightning strike. I'm gonna bottom this card. And thanks to the start of the turn, the might getting destroyed as well, it's gonna be coming up for plus one. So I can either go six, draw a card, or I can just go eight at your at your at your at your blue little blue head on my noggin. I'ma say draw a card. Six damage? Six damage. We're gonna react. Gun me! <laughs> Alright. Block and six. Might is gone, Enlightened Strike to the bin. Card that I drew going into the arsenal, is it blue or not? I'm not gonna tell you. Aiden is just throwing shunts away willy-nilly. I love this. This means later in the game, my pulpings are going to be online. As soon as I can check and make sure that he has four or five shunts in the graveyard or in the banish zone, then I know I'm gonna be ready to kick some ass later in this game. I saw it, dude. Yeah, I saw. Uh, do you know how to get to the arena? Oh, yeah, like like heavy hitters? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, but uh, that's gonna cost you something. Um, uh, this work? Go speak to my brother Bargle. Tell him Hargle sent you. He's by the lake. Hargo sent me. Ah, so you wish to go to the arena? Yeah, yes. Uh, um, just something with a good view. Oh, you will be very close. Yeah, you know that. That's perfect. But, yeah. But, but, money talks. Really? I mean. All right. But first, you must speak to another. My brother, Dargle. Tell him Bargle and Hargle have given you their word of passage. Hey. <coughs> Hargle and Bargle granted me peace. I know what you say. But first, the pain. Come with me. Finally. All right. This is where I leave you. Where, where are my seats? Try not to die. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. Where, where are you going? Oh, yes. You'll be needing this. Dude, what are you doing down here? I wanted to get heavy hitters. It's so expensive. Sweet boy. My child, there's no need to fear. The Realm Games can help you in your quest to get any of those flesh and blood cards you need and support an LGS. The arena beckons you. Join their incredible tournaments at the Realm Games, and you can compete for Realm Games. Prizes beyond your wildest dreams of the greatest tournaments in the land! Huzzah! Buddy, you can't be out here getting Hargle, Bargle, and Dargled. It's not working! can't build the perfect deck. I got it! Guys, I have an idea. The ultimate flesh and blood website, where you can find synthesized data from deck lists from all over the world, and you can see which cards are played the most in each hero. Articles written by the best pro players in the game. Your deck building ideas, your strategic ideas can be realized in flesh and blood. Well, Jacob, we got great news. That all exists, dude, at fabrec.gg. Oh, that's incredible news. Go to fabrec.gg and level up your game. Today. 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 Started my turn. 
Vigor is gonna pop. We're gonna float a resource. And you know what? We're gonna activate Kasai of the Golden Sand. Banish for sure this. Sure, that was a terrible cash in, so it's gone now. <laughs> two reds, two yellows to gain a fun little thing. The next time a weapon I control hits a hero this turn, I'll create a gold token. We're gonna use the Vigor resource to play a Spoils of War which says my next weapon attack this turn gains plus two and go again. And whenever a weapon I control hits this turn, create two copper. We're going to swing a Centauri Saber for five. On hit gold, on hit two copper. No blocking for me. N no reacting for me. One, two, three, four, five to 19 I go. All right, we're gonna get two copper. And for the first time this game, gold. It's almost like you're the uh, like leader of a mercenary band or something. I got a lot of money. <laughs> Swing at you with another saber. This one for only two. I'm gonna put my boots in front of that. I'm gonna block with these scabskin leathers. Your boots are in front of it. No more copper for me. That is my turn. I like swing with the sword and you like bring your leg up <laughs> yeah. in like a kick. Yeah, totally. Tunic is gonna go to three. We're gonna play Berserk. Pitching, barraging Bighorn. Oh, uh, I missed something. What? I should have a counter. I'm, I'm, I'm berserking. Sorry. <laughs> Just whenever I swing twice with my sabers, I, this gets its block back. So that's back to a one defense. So you're berserking. <laughs> <clears throat> Whoa. Until end of turn, whenever I discard a random card with six or more power, banish it. If I do, reveal the top card of my deck. If it has six or more power, I get to draw a card. You're saying you're gonna draw some cards? I would like to, yeah. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna go ahead and play Madcap Charger. As an additional cost to play, I have to discard a random card. If it has six or more power, Madcap Charger has go again. No middle one this time, so I'm gonna go with that one. Oh! Okay, so talk about berserking. <laughs> Madcap Charger now discards Beast Within. But here's what happens. Beast Within is gonna hit the graveyard. When Beast Within is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the combat chain, banish the top card of your deck and lose one. If it has six or more power, put it into your hand. It's not a draw. Otherwise, repeat this process. Beast Within first, I'll reveal the top card of my deck. Oh! So I'll banish. Banish the top card of my deck and lose one, lose a life. Reveal um, again. So reveal, so Beast Within now is gonna show me a Savage Feast. It has six or more power, so I will put it into my hand. Now, Berserk will trigger because I will banish the Beast Within thanks to Berserk after it resolves. I will reveal the top card of my deck. It has six or more power. And you're gonna so draw it. I will draw it. You guys! You guys. So this is currently coming in for five. It has go again. KO also is gonna trigger. I'm gonna get a Might token. All right, we're gonna block three, five. Okay. The thing I let you do is I let you do that if I draw another card. I mean, the whole point of the deck is to go berserk, right? <laughs> it's so sick. The whole point of the deck is to be berserk, which means to truly go berserk. Oh my God. I need to roll these scabskin legs. So we're breaking the chain? Oh. Yeah, we're breaking the chain, which shows why I should have done it at the beginning. So, break the chain, scabskin leathers, and roll this six side die, gain action points equal to half the number rolled, rounded down. That's a one. <laughs> which means I have to break my gambler's gloves immediately and gamble. I did a three, so we don't hit. Sad days. Which means scaps and leathers are so much more dangerous for the rest of the game. So, <laughs> so I'll just pitch another red mm -hmm. to swing big. Oh! If it doesn't hit, you get to create a quicken token when the combat chain closes and it comes in for eight. Okay. This is like the ghost of Blake haunting me from our game. You don't! You're laughing! Block six, seven, Eight. You want that quicken? I would like it, please. <laughs> the one thing about using my scabkins after the go again is I broke the chain. So now watching him block with the Brave Forge and the Dynamo together, instead of having to give the two block on the grains of blood spill, feels bad. I got mega punished for not just being decisive with the scabkins early. Uh, do we have a quicken? No, we'll give you an agility instead. It's gonna do the same thing because I'm pretty sure. I'm going to attack. So let's just pretend this. I'm agile. You're agile instead. I will arsenal this card. Listen. We built this deck to be consistent, am I right? And if there's one thing that's been consistent so far, it's that I'm, I'm playing on hard mode, I guess, today. I'm bummed I didn't get to go, Berserk. All right, start of my turn, I'm going to activate Kasai. Two reds, two yellows, vanished. The next sword that hits this turn will give me money. Mm -hmm. I'm going to swing a Centauri Saber, popping the Quicken. This floats me two, we're coming in for two. On hit, gold. Uh, no blocks? No reactions. Take two. 
More money. Decisions. I'm gonna pay into grains of blood spill. Okay, get a vigor. And then I'm going to swing at you for two. I'll take another two, going down to 14. And that is my turn. Lined my pockets. I swung twice this turn, so it will block again. The card seems quite good, that little Valiant Dynamo card. Good legendary. On my turn, activate my tunic. Okay. Float a resource. Let oh my god! So, we're gonna discard a random card here. Oh my god! Why would you do this? Oh, it's so <laughs> cursed. You freaking brute. You've hit the middle card's been the worst one every time. Yeah, it's the middle. Huh. That's not the best. That is the worst one. Um, all right, we're gonna discard a random card. A couple things that I also, my might token has destroyed as well at the start of turn. Mm -hmm. But I will also have a might thanks to discarding this six power. Now, Blood Rush Bellow lets me draw two cards. Instant speed. Immediately, huh? Yeah. So you know what you have. I am going to activate my balance of justice. You just drew two cards, so I want a card as well because that is only fair and just. It's so lame. <laughs> Give me the cards. Time for pulping. <laughs> yep. One floating. I'm gonna draw a card. We're gonna discard a random card. You can middle me all day. All day, all day long. Savage Feast, gone. <laughs> this is gonna be coming in for seven, no, 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 not seven, nine. Thanks to good old Blood Rush Bellows and the Might token. If you defend with less than two non-equipment cards, it has go again. It also, thanks to discarding a six, has, has dominate. dominate. You know it. Block three. Any reactions? No reactions. No reactions. Take six. Uh, uh, uh. Next up. Pulping. This one's gonna be coming in for eight, thanks to the Blood Rush Bellow. I'm gonna draw a card. Dude. Which one? That one. It's Agile Windup. Normally would have five power, but thanks to KO, it has six power, so this is eight. <sighs> Dominate. Go again. A block three. Take five. Down to six. These pulpings are killer. I wanna prevent so much more of this, but I need to find a way to match his value here. With all this evasive damage because of the dominate, I need to send damage back. And now is the perfect time for this balance of justice. I need this card to draw me something good. And I'm really feeling the weight of all of my steel blade shunts showing up at the same time. Sometimes even two in a hand. And I'm watching my life total go down. I need to start putting some real pressure on this guy. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead then and just pitch this final card to come in with my Ball Breaker. I have certainly discarded a card with six or more power this turn, so it's gonna get plus one from that, plus two from the Blood Rush Bellow. So this is coming in for six. <laughs> the Dominate is so huge here. Aiden would be happy to block out my Blood Rush Bellow turn normally, but because his shunts are gone, these pulpings are alive and I'm getting damaged through like crazy. This is fantastic for me. The Might tokens are coming in so clutch and Ball Breaker is so good. I have plenty of go again in the deck because of the consistency that KO is giving me. And so Ball Breaker as a chain ender, consistently coming in with that extra point of damage is just fantastic. So. Maybe my luck is starting to turn around a little bit. <laughs> Block two, three, six. That's no damage across. Turn pass back to you, sir. Start turn vigor pops. Mm -hmm. Floats me a resource. I'm gonna crack a gold. A two, Let's draw a card. Kasai is now live. I am then going to activate Kasai. One yellow, two yellow, two red. Next sword attack that hits this turn makes a gold. I'm going to Spoils of War, swing a saber at you for four with go again on hit. Two copper and a gold. Give you my two pieces of equipment and this Wrecker Romp to block you for a total of five. That'll push this to five. Yep. I'm gonna close the chain. Okay. I'm going to crack a copper. Okay. Pay four, draw a card. Saber for two. That'll bring my dynamos back online. A block for three total. Pushes it to three, you're blocking out. No gold for you, sir. I really did not expect him to block here. I really thought he's, I'm at six and he's just gonna try to find a way to kill me. And no go again on the draw. So I'm really starting to feel like I should have played Raisin Army at the start of the turn, get the two guys with the gold. The single soldier off the Raisin Army really doesn't feel good, so I, I, I think I'm just gonna have to wait another turn with this in my arsenal and try to get the gold then. Might token pops at the start of the turn. My next attack's gonna get plus one. Yep. I'm gonna pitch for Grash Manacha. This is swing big with the might token. Mm -hmm. It's nine damage. Doesn't hit, you get a quicken. We're gonna block three, four, five. Taking four. Down to two. Maybe I should have put Reckless Swing in this deck. 
This has temper, so when its block is reduced to two and the combat chain closes, it is destroyed. See you later, grains of blood spill. <laughs> <laughs> These might tokens are just nuts. Swing big for nine is just insane. He has to give me more than just two cards, which is so good for me here. The dominate damage from last turn is already coming in so clutch, and because of the might token, swing big is actually threatening lethal. Like, this deck is sick! We're gonna draw swords, pitch a blue, which is what we've been wanting to do this whole time. Draw a card, swords are free. We're going to activate Kasai. We're gonna banish one, two, three, four. Next sword hit will make a gold. Swing a saber for two. Currently no Gogan? Currently no Gogan. I will say no blocks. I will react. Okay. We'll do Blade Runner. For sure. Giving it go again. The next weapon attack this turn gains plus three. Still no reactions. Okay. Take two. Get your gold. Gonna make a gold. We are going to close the chain. We're going to raise an army. Let's go. I will do X equals two. Destroy two gold. Hire two soldiers. Sick. <laughs> this has go again. These guys are once per turn, action, pay one, attack, go again. They swing for three, they have two life, but I can only swing with them if I've attacked with the sword, which I have. I'm gonna pay one and swing the Centauri Cell Sword at you for three damage. I will say no blocks. No reactions. Take three. Down to nine. And then swords are free. I played a Blade Runner Red. Mm -hmm. So I will swing this sword at you. This is a Centauri Saber. For five, it will get my dynamo counter back. No blocks, it'll take five. Get down to four. You should kill those soldiers. I think I have to just fully ignore those soldiers. Not even soldiers, they're cell swords. You guys. What? Just hilarity. Just... Pulping. Draw a card. Yep. Discard a random card. If a card with six or more power is discarded this way, pulping is gonna get dominate. Wait, you just had the last one? Just drew, I just drew it, yeah. <laughs> Middle card. Agile wind up. Okay. KO is gonna turn that into a six. I'm gonna get a might. This is gonna get dominate. It's gonna also go again. Five with dominate. A block four. Blood on her hands. Take one. Take one. This is gonna be ball breaker. I discard a card with six more power this turn, so it's gonna come in for four. One life right now. <laughs> Dude, the ball breaker was totally the call. Block six. <laughs> For sure. I wonder what my last card is. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, you guys, one, two, three. Out of 60 cards, one, two, three. Arsenal, draw four. What are the odds? Someone put the odds in the... Dude, ball breaker. Two cards for his freaking weapon. Like, I mean, we're live at one, which means I, I'm thrilled about every point of value I've gotten from Valiant Dynamo throughout this game. And that Steel Blade shunt decision, whether it was five life saved or four and one, means everything. This pulping would just kill me here, but now I have another turn. All I need is one turn where I can keep two cards, and then I think I'll be able to swing the tempo back and just be stripping cards from him to a point where he can't do enough to me for the rest of the game. I will not swing a cell sword at you. I have to swing a sword. Wow, my. My cell swords won't even attack for me right now, you guys. They don't, even, they don't like you that much. You gotta pay them. I have no you, money. You gotta show them that you're willing to, to attack for them too. I know, but I don't have go again. For the memories, Kasai. Banish blood on her hands. Banish the spoils of war. Banish the blade runner. Next time a sword hits this turn, create a gold. Floating one on hit a gold token. Uh, no blocks, you may have your gold. Pay up. Okay, blood on her hands. So I found some go again. Thanks to the might token, I'm gonna threaten 12 damage, so I'll take all of his cards, and I just gotta find a way to get over 12, because all of his cards pretty much block for three. He can just block 12 until my hand is non-functional and I'm forced into using scab skins, and if I don't hit, or I hit a one, my turn is just over, and then these guys kill me! So I'm hoping in one of these next couple hands, I find a way to get to 13 points of value, and hopefully the might tokens are gonna help me get there, so pray for me. Enlighten strike, putting. That on the bottom, this is gonna come in with go again. Thanks to the might token, it's coming in for six. Block six. I will then attack you with Savage Feast as additional cost, discard a random card. It's a reincarnate. Because it's a reincarnate, it goes on the bottom of the deck. KO is gonna trigger because reincarnate is a six thanks to KO, so it's coming in for six. This, and I have a might for next turn. Which will never be. 
What do you mean? Block three, block two. Take one. Cash in. I literally was like, everything in his deck blocks for three. GG. We got there? <laughs> we got there? <laughs> Go Berserk. <laughs> what just happened? I win! I win the game! Let's go! <laughs> Cash in! Why do you do me so dirty? Let's go. Feels good every time. Honestly, the deck feels incredibly consistent and it's so fun to have these brute cards that have for the entire history of this game felt like kind of a crapshoot. Like, I hope I draw and discard the right thing. Like, I took out everything in the deck except for Blood Rush Bellow and Berserk. Everything else in the deck was a six. So I felt like I was throwing above rate damage like all the time in that game. And as a result of throwing the above rate damage, I was discarding sixes and making might tokens that helped my next turns throw above rate damage. It just, it just felt awesome. Ball Breaker put in so much work throughout this game and gosh darn it, I think I played it, I think I played it fine. I think I played a good game. I guess money's dirty. And when you play with money, you get, you get dirty. And sometimes you get dead. Kasai is so, so cool. And I love the value tempo game just constantly presenting these great turns, being able to block really well, and having several win conditions. Being able to play to blood on our hands, being able to play to raise an army, the modality of being able to have two separate game plans, it scratches that same itch that I love about my main love, Dash. Cause I'm super cool, I can't wait to play another game, and, and Heavy Hitters is here. I can't wait to draft. You guys, <laughs> let's go, I lost! <laughs> Fine. What's the problem? Fine. You got any problems? Huh? Any problems you want to talk I about? I got no problems. You got no problems? No. All you the shunts at the start of the game! Well, you could have pitched them, but you played them. That seems like a you. I did pitch some of them. Pitch one of them. <laughs> what, what else I am I gonna do? Play, play, play. What else am I gonna I do? Play, play. I don't bet! So. I got the guys, <laughs> just too late, you guys. <laughs> this set is so sick. It's so cool. These these cards are so cool. They're so fun to play with. I mean, I think the thing that has struck me the most, other than just the incredible feeling of dominance and victory, <laughs> is how much I just want to play with these cards. Like, these heroes do things in such cool and, like, new ways. I also want to shout out Howling Minds. I totally based my list off the list that he put up on the TCG Player website talking about how to build Berserk KO. I just switched a couple things around from his list, made it a little... Ball breaker? Ball breaker. I wanted everything to discard. I didn't do the barraging, but shout out to Scott Mines. He's one of the best minds in, in our industry and one of the nicest dudes, so shout out to you. But you made it to the end of the video, so let's go ahead and talk about the giveaway. This giveaway is sponsored by The Realm Game, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna go ahead and head to Twitter. You're gonna wanna post a link to this video with the hashtag 3Floating. That's hashtag T-H-R-E-E floating. Go ahead and post it there. Talk about something you liked in the video and we will pick a random winner from those entries and we will make sure you get a box of heavy hitters courtesy of The Realm Games. Also, we just wanna thank our other sponsor, Fabrec. .gg. Uh, truly, it couldn't be a better time to go check out Fabrec.gg. This is the beginning of a new season. This is when you're gonna wanna build the decks. You're gonna maybe wanna build some of the decks you see on the show. Fabrec is the place to do so. And we just gotta thank LSS for helping us out and being a part of the process this time around because we love them so much. And we love their game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thank you all for watching. This is, uh, we have so much exciting stuff planned for 2024. We spent last year building a thing and now we're ready to kinda, kinda kind of send the thing. Hit you in the face with some content. Heavy hitters. Hit you heavy with that content. Uh. One more. Uh. <laughs> See you next time. Flesh and blood! Flesh and blood!